Welcome to my podcast. Today I will be making up more NHL trade deadline trade proposals. With the NHL trade deadline fast approaching on Monday, I thought that I would create more trade deadline trade proposals. Like the last podcast, I will be creating these trades based on the players that are rumored to be moved at the deadline. The first player on this list is Kyle Oposo of the New York Islanders. Kyle Oposo is on the last year of his contract. He is going to be demanding a whole lot of money on a free agency. And the Islanders may not be willing to pay him all that money. So it's very likely that Kyle Oposo may be playing his final games as an Islanders. So with that in mind, Kyle Oposo most likely is going to be on the move. Or it is in the Islanders' best interest to move him because you don't want to lose a posto for nothing if he does walk in free agency. Now, a posto would have a lot of suitors, but I think the best fit for a posto would be the Minnesota Wild. And in return for Kyle Oposo, the Wild would give up Charlie Coyle a first round pick in 2016 and a conditional second round pick in 2017 if the Minnesota Wild make it past the second round of the playoffs or make it to the second round of the Western Conference playoffs. Again, that's Kyle Oposo to the Minnesota Wild for Charlie Coyle, a first round pick of 2016, and a conditional second round pick if the Wild make it to the second round of the Western Conference playoffs. The next play on this list is Dale Weiss, the Montreal Canadiens. With the Montreal Canadiens season very much in the balance and the uncertainty as to whether or not the Canadians will make the playoffs, Dale Weiss is one of those players that many playoff teams could use because he's big, he's strong, he adds size to the lineup, and is very important for teams making playoff runs. A team that could use Dale Weiss's services is the Dallas Stars. The Dallas Stars would trade Colton Seaver and a third round pick in 2017. Colton Seaver had a pretty solid season last year, but for whatever reason, this year he's been mostly playing on the fourth line. And the third round pick is an added bonus for Dale Weeks. The next player on this list is Jordan Eberle of the Edmonton Oilers. Eberle has been rumored to be on the move for quite a while now. Eberle has been arguably one of the hottest scorers in the NHL in this recent recent month. This may be due to the fact that the Oilers are trying to show case him for trade, so they put him on the line with McDavid so he could get the highest potential return. With that in mind, Jordan Eberle is probably the most likely to be traded from the Oilers because, and get the most back in return because he's, of all the players they're trying to trade, he is very consistent. He'll get 60 points a season. He'll play power play and he can score. 
20 or 30 a season. So he's a no-brainer for teams to pick up if they're looking for scores. A team that is in need for a right winger and a scorer is San Jose Sharks. The San Jose Sharks would trade Mirko Mueller, who is one of their top defensive prospects. This is a really tough piece to give up for the Sharks. But if you're getting a Jordan Everly, I think it's very worth getting, giving up. Uh, Rick Chartier, who is a Ford prospect for the Sharks and a first round pick. So, in other words, the Sharks would give up a top defensive prospect, a mid-level prospect, and a first-round pick in 2016 for Jordan Everly, which would immediately help their scoring and help out their top six depth. The next player on this list is David Schlenko of the New Jersey Devils. The Devils are another one of those bubble teams that may or may not make the playoffs. They are on a bit of a losing skid right now. So it is in their best interest to get the best, the most out of the players that have some value. And David Schlenko is in that boat right now. A team that could use his services is the Montreal Canadiens. The Montreal Canadiens are really hampered with injuries. David Schlepko is a solid defenseman that can play up on the top four, but I think he is a good bottom pair defenseman that can play on the power play when needed. The Montreal Canadiens would be a great fit for David Schlenko. And they would give up a second round pick in 2017. Lars Eller of the Montreal Canadiens is a player that has been rumored to be on the move for a long time. It seems like he's been on the trade block for, I don't know, the past two years, but he hasn't been moved. Maybe this is the year he gets moved. The Philadelphia Flyers are in need of a big center that can also play wing, and Lars Eller is a player that can do that. In return, they would give up Michael Roffel in the third round pick in 2016. Michael Roffel is a really solid second or third line player, but the difference is Lars Eller would provide the Flyers the size that they like in their life. I know. Not that Michael Roffel isn't good or isn't productive, but I think that Lars Eller would fit the identity that the Flyers are trying to construct now. Next player on the list is Nail Yakupov of the Edmonton Oilers. Nail Yakupov, unfortunately for the Oilers, is a wasted first round pick. You look back at all the former first round picks. And Nail Yakupov is one of those players where the Oilers could have passed on him and got on the Ryan Murray instead of Yakupov. Or who knows, maybe even Jacob Truba, or they could have traded down. But nonetheless, they decided to take a chance on Yakupov but they never developed him like a first rounder. They kept on sticking him on this, the third line 
and playing him with third and fourth line players, how is he going to have a chance to produce? He was set up to fail from the start. He really needs to get a change of scenery. So with that in mind, a team that would be very interested in his services is the Montreal Canadiens, who have Alex Gachinyuk, who Nel Yakupov had great years playing with in, Star in Sarnia before he got drafted. The Montreal Canadiens need a right winger, which Yakupov is, and they want a scorer, which Yakupov could be, and they want someone to play alongside Gachinyuk. So Yakupov and Gachinyuk have the chemistry from juniors. So they would be taking a risk to hope that that pays off in the NHL level. The Canadians would give up Nathan Beaulieu and Michael Bourneval. Michael Bourneval was a forward who played on the team last year. He had a streak of games where he had, he put up a few points here and there, but he couldn't sustain that level of play. Nathan Beaulieu is an offensive defenseman that can play on the second power play unit. The Edmonton Oilers do need a defenseman of that caliber because Justin Schultz hasn't really panned out. And they don't have defense. They need defense. Lee Stepniak is the next player on this list. Similar to David Schlemko, he's in the same boat as him. The New Jersey Devils are on the bubble and in danger of not making the playoffs. So it is in their best interest to trade players that have value and it are having good seasons. Lee Stepniak is having a revival season at the age of 33. He is having one of his best seasons, maybe in his career. A team that would be interested in Lee Stepniak is the Tampa Bay Lightning. The Lightning would be interested in him because he is very versatile. He can play anywhere from the first to third line. He can play on the penalty kill. And he's a right winger, which they, they, they could need. So uh, Lightning would trade Cedric Paquette in a third round pick in 2016. Cedric Paquette is having a down year right now, which is why if they want to win the cup, they should invest in uh, a player that's a little more experienced and perhaps has more playoff experience. Tyler Bozak of the Toronto Maple Leafs is the next player that has been rumored to be on the move. A player and this trade is very simple. The Washington Capitals would need a player like Tyler Bozak because they need depth at center behind Kuznetsov and Backstrom. I mean, right, Mike Richards is okay at this point, but he's a bit rusty. Johansson is more of a winger to me. If you add Bozak, that solidifies your third line and makes you almost the favorite in the Eastern Conference. So in exchange for Bozak, you would trade Brooks like 
and a first round pick in 2016. Now, you're saying, why would Toronto take Brooks Likes contract? Well, Toronto would be getting a first round pick basically to take the contract. And with all these, they just moved Phenel. They're going to move a lot of contracts during the trade deadline. And Brooks Like has veteran leadership. If adding a contract like Brooks Like means adding a first round pick, I think that is something that Toronto would do. Especially for a player like Tyler Bozak, who is overpaid to begin with. Better student is another player who has been on the radar to be moved for a while now. Columbus has had has been a lot a big disappointment. Better student has been the longest tenured Blue Jacket, so moving him means that. They are moving the longest tenured blue jacket. Better to in, would be needed for a team in need of defense. A team in need of defense would be the Colorado Avalanche, who have been in need of defense for a while. The, they would trade a third round pick in 2019 in exchange for Better Tootin. And remember, Better Tootin has three more years of 4.5 million left on his contract. That's a lot of money. But I think it would help the Colorado Avalanche because with even when they are young defensemen come up, he can serve as a veteran mentor to them. Brad Boyce is another player that Toronto is looking to move. He's playing on the fourth line currently. And I think some teams would trade for him. He wouldn't get much in return, but a playoff team could use him for death scoring. The Florida Panthers could use some depth scoring and a right winger at that because the injuries have hit the Florida Panthers. They would trade a fourth round pick from 2016 in exchange for Brad Boyce. Kirby Reichel requested a trade from the Blue Jackets back in January. And you can't blame him because, let's face it, the Columbus franchise has been pretty bad this year. Kirby Reichel should get a chance in the NHL elsewhere. A team that needs a player like Kirby Reichel would be the Carolina Hurricanes. By the way, Kirby Reichel projects as a two-way forward that has the ability to score goals. In exchange for Kirby Reichel, the Hurricanes would trade Bill Giuseppe and a third-round pick in 2017. Brad Richardson is the next player on this list. Brad Richardson is of place for the Arizona Coyotes right now. He is tradable, even though he just signed a contract 
this past off season. For teams looking for depth centers for their playoff run, he is useful. With the injury to David Boland, Brad Richardson would be of use for the Florida Panthers. They would trade a fourth round pick in 2017 in exchange for him. I just want to sum up the trades so far that I have made. Dale Weiss would go to the Dallas Stars for a Cohen Sevier and a third round pick in 2017. Jarrett Everly would go to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for Mirko Mueller, Roy Chartier, and a first round pick in 2016. David Slepko would go to the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for a second round pick in 2017. Large Eller would go to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for Michael Raffle and a third round pick in 2016. Luis Stepniak would go to the, the Tampa Bay Lightning, sorry, for Cedric Paquette and a third round pick in 2018. Neil Yakupov would go to the Montreal Canadiens in exchange for Michael Bourneval and Nathan Beaulieu. Better Tutin would go to the Colorado Avalanche in exchange for a third round pick in 2019. Tyler Bozak goes to the Washington Capitals in exchange for Brooks Light and a first round pick in 2016. Brad Boyce goes to the Florida Panthers in exchange for a fourth round pick in 2016. Kirby Reichel goes to the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for Phil DiGiuseppe and a third round pick in 2017. Brad Richardson goes to the Florida Panthers in exchange for a fourth round pick in 2017. David Jones is the next player on this list of players rumored to be moved. A player that could use David Jones is the National Predators. They are in need of a right winger and depth. In exchange for David Jones, the Predators would create a fourth round pick in 2016 and a seventh round pick in 2017. Nicholas Grossman is a defenseman that would be highly covered, coveted at the trade deadline because he's physical which is what you need in the playoffs. And he has only one year left on his deal, which is very good for playoff teams because his playoff, as a playoff team, you are looking for rentals. A team that would be interested in Grossman would be the Boston Bruins. Boston Bruins love physical defensemen, and Grossman would fit that identity. Grossman would probably fetch a third round pick in 2016. I have a blockbuster on up next. Between the Philadelphia Flyers and the Toronto Maple Leafs, this trade involves Jay Gartner and Mark Arcabello going to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for Matt Reed, Robert Hag, who is a defensive prospect, and a second round pick in 2016. Brandon Prust is a player that the Penguins would really need. They need size, they need depth, and they need a right wing. But then again, Brandon Prust is a player that almost all playoff teams would want. So the Penguins would give up Scott Wilson and a fifth-round pick in 2017. 
Scott Wilson is young, and he does have a future in the NHL. But right now, the Penguins are trying to make a run at the playoffs. So Brandon Prust would be a much better fit for them. The last player I have on NHL trade proposals at the deadline is Mike Hoffman. Mike Hoffman was a player that went through a hard negotiation with the Ottawa Senators, finally went through arbitration, and then was awarded $2.5 million. That is not going to work well with the Ottawa Senators because Mike Hoffman right now is having a career year and he is going to get paid on free agency or in free agency. So it is in the Senators' best interest to trade him because if Hoffman gets offered an offer sheet and they decide not to match it, fine. You get a pick. But Mike Hoffman wants a lot of money and you want I'm uh, sorry. Let, let me hear correct that. Mike Hoffman would become a UFA because of his age. He is 27 next year. So he would become a UFA which is bad for the Senators because Mike Hoffman is one of their primary scorers. So right now you want to get something for him. You can't let him walk for nothing. That's similar to the Kyle Oposa scenario. But the difference here is my, Mike Hoffman has been underpaid for so long. And the, the owner of the Ottawa Senators has been notorious for being cheap and not paying their players. If the Ottawa Senators do not want to trade, I mean, to sign Mike Hoffman, they better trade him or else he's going to walk. A team that would be interested in the services of Mike Hoffman is the Anaheim Ducks. In exchange for Hoffman, they would get Jacob Silverberg, who they dealt away from Bobby Ryan. And Jacob Larson. Jacob Larson is a very good defensive prospect for the Ducks. But as you well are aware, the Ducks are loaded on in defense and defensive prospects. And the Ducks are pretty good on their depth at Ford. Jacob Stoffenberg is playing on the third line right now. And they're not doing, he's not having a good season. So if you can get up Mike Hoffman for this deal, I think the Ducks would do it. Because Mike Hoffman would instantly help their power play. And those are all my deals that I have. So to sum up my last four or five trades, David Jones goes to the National Predators in exchange for a fourth round pick in 2016 and a seventh round pick in 2017. Nicholas Grossman goes to the Boston Bruins in exchange for a third round pick in 2016. Jake Gardner and Mark Arcabello gets dealt to the, the Philadelphia Flyers. Sorry. Uh, in exchange for Matt Reed, Robert Hag, and a second round pick in 2016. Brandon Frost gets dealt to the Pittsburgh Penguins 
in exchange for Scott Wilson and the fifth round pick in 2017. Last but not least, Mike Hoffman just dealt to the uh, Anaheim Ducks in exchange for Jacob Silverberg and Jacob Larkson. That's all I have for uh, NHL trade deadline pr trade proposals. Next week, I will be back to sum up the NHL trade deadline.